Hello everybody and thank you for joining me today. Uh, again, so those of you who've just joined, uh, welcome. We're going to be looking at week three of working with the wine data set. So this has been a progressive series and what we've been doing is uh, effectively, I, I've gone away, I had a look at Kaggle, I spotted this uh, catalogue of wine data. So effectively, there's a catalogue, there's some wines in there, and then some reviews about it. And I thought that was a really interesting data set. So effectively, what I've been doing week by week is having a look at that data, exploring it, importing bits of that data, and I sort of talk through some of the, the thinking that I do with that. And what you'll spot as we go through this, as we understand the data more and more, we'll keep, so for example, refactoring uh, the data model as our understanding improves. And so the hope is we just see where this goes. So this is very much a, an opportunity if you've got any questions or things to uh, fire at me. And it's gonna be a path of discovery, and oh, sorry, a void of discovery for all of us. So I'm very gonna quickly uh, flag the uh, this uh, repo here. So if I just quickly go there. So I've just done a shortened link to, um, just doing a short um, uh, link to the repository. And what you'll find here is I've got the data, uh, images and whatever else, but the, the main point here is the readme in the in the repository here just gives you a description of what we've been looking at and obviously you've got a quick link to jump in. And what I do here is I document everything. So I'll write up uh, what we've done. So here, for example, in week one, we're talking about the data uh, any assumptions that we make or any interesting things we might want to ask ourselves, like any sort of models that we, we think about and go through. And then you'll see the code snippets as well. So for those of you who perhaps missed the, the first couple of weeks and you want to join in and explore the data, you can do so. So just basically, you've got these code blocks here. So just copy those and paste those. So you don't need to download the data or anything like that. It will pull it from the repo. So all you need to do is just sort of run these code chunks here. So that gives you a quick idea of what's going on there. Okay, so let's get cracking. So what's the plan this week? So um, for those of you who've been following along, the challenge that we had previously was that we spotted that we had the wines and the wines have their titles, they have their names, but that we had no separate uh, field that's explained what was the year of that wine. And what we had this situation where you had wine with the same name, so the same title, so title is a property we've put on, on the wine label, but they the year's included there as well. So if, let's say, uh, ABC Estates uh, has some Shiraz, so let's say ABC Estates Vintage Shiraz, uh, it wouldn't be that and then the year, it'd be, you know, uh, ABC, uh, ABC Estates Vintage Shiraz 2005, 2006, 2007. So these each come as individual lines. And some of the thinking that we thought would be good or what would be a nice thing to go off and explore would be to go away and extract that year so that we can have a look at all of the, the wines with the same title, you know, so they're all grouped together, coming from different years and then we can start to explore like so which one got a better rating so were there certain years that got better ratings and then we can start to compare sort of like wines that are coming from uh similar regions or nearby regions or the same region and to see you know is there an impact from the year as an example so it's an interesting dynamic to look at so what we're going to be doing today so it might be a bit of a shorter session today is we're going to go away and think about how we're going to get those how we're going to extract the year out of the wine title. And when we figure that bit out, what we're going to do is go away and refactor the data model. And we're going to do that with the existing data. So previously, how we were changing the data model, were, we, we weren't doing anything massive with regards to changing what the data looked like. We were just adding more elements and we were doing all of that by loading data. Whereas today, what we're going to be doing is effectively changing the structure of our data with the data existing in the database. So we're not going to be importing any more data, we're effectively going to be moving things around with what we've already got there. And then we're gonna go away and ask a few more questions. So I'm quite keen to find, for example, what wines have we got in the catalog where we've got multiple years, for example, and then maybe we can have a look at the comparison between year and rating. So a bit of fun around that as well. And as I just mentioned, all of the links, code, write-up, models, justifications, etc live in that link. So do go and have a look at that.
Okay, right, let's get to it. So, got my handy uh, instance of uh, Neo4j up here running, so I'm using Neo4j desktop. Um, I've all got the previous data that I've loaded in before. And if I come up uh, into Neo4j browser, and just to remind you, let's have a look at what the data model looks like. So what we've got, oh, I should probably colour some of these in a bit. But as you can see, what we've got so far, we have got a country, a province is part of a country. We've got a winery, that's uh, from a province. We've got the wine itself, which comes from a winery. And attached to the wine, we have got the uh, taster who, who tasted that wine and, and rates that wine. I'll double check if we put the ratings on. If not, we'll do that today as well. Uh, we've got the variety and th this is an interesting one which we touched on last week as well because we have a lot of duplicates in that data and duplicates not in the sense of exact same name but for example we've got things like um, Syrah and Shiraz which are the same grape okay you know that's that's fine uh, we can sort of you know with that but we have interesting ones as well where we have quite a few grapes where the spelling's slightly different uh, and I'm guessing that's a you know a country thing a regional thing that kind of thing so we're going to at some point have to look at what we're going to do to resolve those so we'll have a look at some approaches that we can use for that but we'll leave that there for now and we've also got a designation so we need to dig in a little bit more to what designation means but if we've got some time today we will otherwise we'll, we'll park that but what I'm really keen to do and let's Pull up an example of wine so I'm going to just go here and click on wine and oh dear let's let's quickly do that so we can see the title that'll be long but that's fine but what you can see here so this is the challenge that we've got so when we we're importing the data we didn't have a separate column in our spreadsheet to you know separate column that said what was the year of the wine it's included in the title but that's okay because this this is a great way for us to practice what approaches we can use to manipulate the data that is in the that's already in the database so how do we go about it so let's have a little think about what we might do and i'm just going to bring up um let's bring this back up and let's bring up arrows so Conveniently, we've still got to, due to the fact that what Arrows does is Arrows caches uh, what you've been drawing up locally. So I've I've left a copy of Arrows there, so we can refer back to the data model. So at the moment, what we have is we've got our wine and we've got the title. Uh, we we haven't yet imported the description. That's something maybe if we got the opportunity today, we'll touch on. Otherwise, that's definitely going to be a bit of fun. We'll have it next time and there is so much fun to be had with the description because we can perhaps pull out some really interesting things that we can search but for now you know we'll see how we get on today but the thing that we're looking at here is we've got wine and what we really want to do is extract the year out of the wine and have the wine title now the interesting thing to think about here is how we're going to do this because let me draw up what i mean and let's do it in a separate bit for now and then we can consult oh, no i didn't want to do that let's just shuffle this one let me talk a little bit about where i'm thinking or where my thinking is at the moment so we've got wine at the moment so let's put in wine and we know that we'll have a wine from a certain year so let's do that so, okay so wine whoops has a year so let's do this okay so now we start to think about well how do we want to model this because do we want to say well we've got a wine here and we've now extracted the year out of the title so whereas here we've got let's say uh, ABC Estates Shiraz 2014 ABC Estate Shiraz 2015 ABC and so forth and so forth so we're going to have like that repeat number now here if we split it out and we went 
down this route where we've got unique year, we're going to have one year, one uh, wine, which would be the title of the wine, which would be ABC Estates, and then we'd have three years here. So okay, let's 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 work this example. Let's let's do a worked example. So let's do a title ABC Estates Shiraz, and then let's say we've got a number of years for this. So let's do this. So it's going to do. Um, let's do a 2016 so I've not thought about this so now now I'm going to think through it and I'm going to go through my, my processes and again you know if you've got questions or suggestions then fire them through let's do value 2016 and let's do a 20 let's add one more year for why not all good things come in threes value 2017 okay so the interesting thing so so this looks fine so far but what happens when i look at another wine so let's say we've got a uh, number one vintage table red for argument's sake i'm not being very imaginative with these names so title uh no one Vintage table red for argument's sake. So now what's going to happen is we're then going to link these into the years. And this might be completely fine. I'm just trying to think just sort of talk through my thinking with this. So let's say this this has, you know, let's say they didn't produce anything in 2016, but they produced something in 2017. So that might be one way what you know how we we're going to model the status. Effectively, what we're going to say is we want to extract out the extract out the the wine and then we have the year now the thing that's slightly missing here is how do we attach this to the taster so we need to have a quick look at the designation so we'll what I'll do is I'll bring up the spreadsheet in a moment to see what happens because hopefully the variety should be the same so we'll do a quick we'll do a quick uh, dummy test to do that but I can't imagine the variety is going to change as long as the title is exactly the same uh, and we'll have a quick peek what designation means so if designation uh, repeats across the different years then fine you know happy days that's going to connect into what we pull out uh, but the interesting thing here is how are we going to tackle the taster now of course the taster may taste the same wine across different years but the taster is likely to give a different score for different years so how are we going to capture that because at the moment where we have we can't do taster to wine with the the rate score because uh we, we've got a number of years so how are we going to split between how, how are we going to uh, reconcile between the different years and we uh, we can't attach it to the year because obviously there's now going to be loads of loads of uh years now so we've got lots of wines connected to the same year and we we may want to do connecting the the wines to years because we can find some interesting information so we need to have a little think about what we want to do to model that and what we might say is m maybe we do something like um what do we call this actually maybe this isn't going to be wine so let me say this is going to be wine uh wine group why not Let's call this wine group. So when we sign wine group, this is a group of all of the same titles. So this will also be wine group. And then what we would say is that actually the wine would then be connected to the wine group. So let's for argument's sake, so let's just do a couple of these. Let's work through our thinking. So let's say this is going to be wine and then this title is going to be what do we say abc estates shiraz 2015 and then that gets away and let's do the same for over here so this is number one vintage table red 2015 yeah maybe this is let's have a take a step back and see what's going on here we may end up changing this later on and that's fine this is all a learning process to see what's going on but effectively what we've got here 
is so this here is going to be representative of this node here and then this allows us to create sort of like the, 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 the data providence so we can show well actually this came from this and then it's split out so if you want to ask queries about all of the wine groups that were all of the wine titles that went that had a or produced a bottle of wine for say 2015 we can do that at the moment so we can uh, query by the year note if we want to find out all of the years that came from this wine we can do right here or more to the point we can go here and then say well okay tell me about all of the other years for this wine title so that kind of works so the only things that I'm thinking about here, and again, we can we can see what happens and we can do a test query in a bit to see what is what, what are the year ranges that we're working with. So the only, the only thing to sort of bearing in mind is that we've got something like 120,000 wines and what we may end up with, and it's, you know, it's not, not a problem. It's only, it's only a problem if we were going to always start our queries here and then go from year to year to year. But we may end up with these becoming quite dense nodes. And what a dense node is, is that we've got lots of relationships. Uh, you know, a lot, so the many, many, many relationships coming off of that node. Uh, it's, not, it's not a problem, for example, if, we, if that was the end point of our query or we wanted to bring back all of the wines with that year, then that's, that's not a problem, that's fine. It becomes a problem if, for argument's sake, we want to say, I want to go via 2015, then go to 2016, then I'll go out to 2017, then that ends up with it like sort of having to go down so many, you know, potentially sort of millions of paths if you've got um, sort of thousands of relationships coming off those. So um, I think let's see what happens. And then if we need to change that, then we can change that. But, uh, you know, for the purposes of exploring and see what happens, I'm sure it's fine. So doing it like this means that we can we keep the taster on here we keep the designation on here and we still are able to group out the sort of like pull out the title without the year and then connect them to the year so we can still ask some interesting questions about you know what was the variability between wine and then yeah that might be an option then what we might do later is when we think about how could we make this more performant if we were continuously asking queries uh, about the years compared to other years and that kind of thing then we can take then we can think about how we can refactor that and, and make that more performant but i think for now this is probably not good this is not sorry it's not bad bad place to go so i, I think that's that's reasonable so let's give ourselves some uh, useful names so let's say let's give this course relationship in wine group gonna in wine group and let's say, because we're doing, oh no, let's, let's do, let's go with has, has year, because realistically, uh, each wine group's probably only going to have, like, even if it had, you know, it was, it was like one of these sort of um, European wineries that's been around for a while. I mean, it's it's going to have like maximum maybe 20, 30 years top. So I, I'm not going to bother with putting like the year in there. So I'll talk about that in the future as to why you, you might add a year in the relationship type. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. So we're going to say um, sort of wine group has a year and then we've got the year. So there we go. So we've got some relationship types here that we're going to work with. And this is what we're going to do to refactor our model. So let's have a go at that so i've been having a bit of a think about how i do this and uh, as you can see by my tabs i've been looking at uh, apoc so i'll talk about apoc in a second i've got the, the cipher ref card up ready originally i was thinking um i'm probably going i'm probably going to need some kind of uh, regular expression to be able to dig out that year so again let's give you a quick reminder of what the year looks like so Let's do a return end of title. So you can see you've got the sort of got the year buried in there. And what would be really nice is to pull some of these out. And I, I was looking at this and thinking this is probably going to be a regex job. And what will be interesting as well at some point. So let's see if we get a chance to tackle this as well. We're probably also we probably might if we spot that there's a discrepancy so let's say we've got this Mirasso uh, 20, uh, Mirasso Chardonnay and it says look, excuse me central coast and maybe we've got one that for whatever reason the this I assume this is the region they've put on there 
doesn't appear we, we might want to try and remove it to deal with any potential duplicates but i'll leave that for later so now my main concern is how do we get how do we extract this year out and i was having a think about this and i was thinking ah we're probably going to be doing a regex so um i haven't really done much regex in a while so i was uh, I, I i i will admit now i thought I, I suspect you would probably rather not watch me spend 15 minutes trying to figure out what the uh, the, the regex uh, parlance would be for this problem so i have i do have one i, I did earlier but i will talk through what's going on there uh, so originally i thought ah, let's see let's see what we can do with cipher and what became quick, clear quite quickly is that regex is only available for the where clause and if so this would be great to go off and say bring me back all of the titles that have got years and we know all the titles have got years but i can't do anything with it I, I i still need to be able to somehow pull that year out so i thought aha right let's have a look what apoc has got uh, for those of you who have not come across apoc before APOC is a uh, plugin library that extends uh, the functionality that you have uh, with uh, with Cypher, and it's it's really cool. And there are so many functions in there. So let's we can quickly nip over to the uh, like this is the documentation sort of table of contents, and there's a lot of stuff in there. So you've got lots of things for helping you load various data sources. So obviously you've got uh, JSON, CSV. Uh, you'll you'll spot things as well uh, like the JDBC connector. So if you want to pull data out of your um, your your favourite uh, relational databases, so I've used this for pulling data in and out of MySQL. So you've got all of these things. You've got loads of really cool tools. Um, you have got graph refactoring options in here. You've got structure manipulation things. You've got um, sort of editing your time date functions, mathematical functions. There is a lot of good stuff in there. And what I was interested in, I sort of went all the way around to the bottom, are text functions, because I thought, right, we're probably going to need some heavyweight te text functions here to work this. So I will show you the documentation first, and then I'll give you an idea of, uh, I'll show you how you can get APOC set up if you haven't got it already set up. So I went over to text functions, and I thought, how am I going to do this? Having a think. So originally I was thinking, mm, do I want to do a, can't tell me kind of a string search. And I thought, oh, regular expression, that's the one for me. So I had a quick look and I was thinking, oh, hang on a minute. This exactly this uh, line in the documentation, I thought, aha, this is how I'm going to do it. So it's, it's kind of like, it almost feels like bits of the, the sort of topsy-turvy way of doing it. But what I want to do is I want to do in this example here and what you can see they're doing a replace with a regex. And what happens here is it basically says, um sort of replace everything that's not a letter so replace everything that's not a letter with nothing so basically replace it with an empty character and then this this will uh provide and this will uh, return this hello world so you see there's no space here and there's no exclamation mark and i went aha so that's how i can get the year out so what i can do is i got to figure out the way to get the regex pattern that allows me to uh, uh, replace everything that's not four digits in order with nothing and then that's going to give them the year. I thought brilliant okay so we're now going to get the year and then what we can do is like uh, do the converse and say anything that is a digit or anything that's four digits next to each other get rid of and that's the approach that we could use to get the wine title without the year so there are probably uh, there could well be more efficient ways of doing this but it works it's it works for purposes of uh, getting near done so let's have a look so let me show you what i've got so oh my goodness have i accidentally got rid of my example that's okay i've got one i did earlier in, in true blue peter fashion we'll uh, we'll pull the query back so let's go with this one to begin with so this is the nice easy one. I'm going to show you the one what, what we can do to remove the remove the year from the title. So what I've got here, so I'm using APOC. Oh no, I'm going to show you how to install APOC first. Hang on, let's do that. Right, so what you can do to do to install APOC, so if you're using desktop, what you need to do is if your database is running, you'll need to stop the database. 
and if you scroll down to the bottom you'll see this section here that says plugins and all you need to do is click on plugins and then you'll see an option where it says APOC and it'll say uh, install a bit like you've got here so all you need to do is click on install give it a few moments and then APOC will be installed and what happens as well as well as adding the plugin into your plugins folder for your database it'll go and make a couple of adjustments as well into your config file if you are using sandbox i believe apoc's already there so you don't need to do anything you just uh, fire up a blank sandbox and you should have those functions available to you if you are using the uh, like you're using um nif Jane console mode then again you'll stop the database if you Google APOC near for j you will find the GitHub repository for there. So you can find the latest version of APOC. So you want to drop that into your plugins folder, which you will find here. So i just to give you an example of what that looks like. So if I go to manage and if I go to the open folder, and then what you will see is, let's bring this up. Uh, we see, so your, um, if you open, go into your near for j database section, it'll look something like this. And then you just go into your plugins folder, drop in your uh, APOC jar there. And then what you will also need to do is you will need to update your configuration. So if you go into, it's near for j.conf. So again, it was in that, oops, let's show you again. So it's, you'll find it in the conf folder. So you've got near for j.conf. So what you'll want to do, you'll want to uh, open that and edit, and then you'll need to say that you're allowing, uh, you're allowing uh, APOC, uh, you're allowing plugin. So let me just quickly do. Oh, can we find you? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Actually, if I do APOC, that might be an easier thing. That would probably be a more sensible thing to search. There we go. So what you need to do, you'll, you'll see you've got a parameter here that's DBMS security procedures that are unrestricted. And then you just need to say apoc.start and that basically says allow all of the uh, functions and procedures that you've got in APOC to run. So there you go, save that, start up your database and you are good to go. So that's if you want to get APOC um, set up. Right, so let's go back to this. Let's have a look, a look at this. So what this is going to do here, this is effectively the one where we want to remove the uh, year from the year from our wine title. So I'm using the uh, APOC text replace. So I'm not doing anything to change my data just yet. I'm just going to show you a sample of what's going on. So I'm just uh, matching wine. I'm going to return the wine title so we can see what the original looked like and I'm going to return the example where I've removed the year so this is going to say um, apoc.text.replace wine title and then here this is basically saying replace anything that's a four digit year and there's probably a nice way of doing this but this works and I'm you know I'm yay for working uh, and it's going to replace it with nothing and I'm going to call it as test so I can just call it wine without year probably more sensible name and I'm just going to do the first four. So if I run that, you will see, there we go. We've we've got our one without year. So that's going to be our one group node and we've got a title for that. So brilliant. So we've got that. And then what I'm going to want to do is to uh, do the other one where we take the year. Now I'm going to just retrieve. Oh, uh, here we go. So this is the query and let's quickly talk through it. I had a little bit of help with this. so. Uh, effectively what's going on here and um, because we're trying to do the replace everything that's not a four digit year so we want to keep the four digit year and we want to replace everything else that's not a four digit year so basically what's going on so saying here is to so replace anything that's not a digit from not to nine so that's going to take all of the letters special characters spaces all that stuff so it's going to get rid of all of that or what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, get rid of anything that's not a character followed by a digit that occurs one to three times and then followed by anything that's not a digit. So 
This is in the off chance we had something like number one wine. So you know the, the mock example of a, a wine title that we had or if there's some information. So, so we want to get rid of all of that. Or at the start of the uh, at the start of the title, we want to get rid of anything that is a digit that's up to three digits uh, next to each other. Or oh, and then yeah, so, and then that's not a that's uh, not, not not a number. Or we want to get rid of anything that's uh, that's not a number, followed by any digits up to three together at the end of our string so a bit of a mouthful there's probably a pretty way of doing this but again it works like who am i to quibble if it works so let's have a quick look at what that looks like and the same idea we're going to return the uh, first four and there we go and we've got the year so we've got uh, a way to go and get some year titles out now let's go and pull them out so i'm going to first start off with the what, what do I start? Do I start with the title of the year? It doesn't matter. We're going to be using a merge here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some more indexes so that we can help out. So again, we're creating indexes. So especially when we're using something like merge, if we don't use an index, it's effectively doing a scan across the entire database to see if that pattern exists. Whereas if we've got an index in there, it'll effectively go, ah, right, I'm going to do a look up by index that exists great I don't need to create anything or uh, it doesn't exist I'm not going to create it so that's what we're going to do so let's do some indexes so we're going to have I'm going to stick with um, year and wine title so I'm going to do that so create index on wine title and let's stick with title because that's what we call the wine and I'm doing um, more than one command at the same time uh, so I'm using semicolon so if you haven't got it really enabled you will need to enable the multi-statement uh, option and let's create index on year and that's going to be let's call it value I'm not thinking anything created there right that'll do let's do that and let's start with the wine title why not let's start with the wine title okay so I'm going to take the this one that we know that um, does the job and we have got quite a few wines so let's just actually let's remind ourselves how many wines we've got so what we might need to do we may have to do some kind of periodic um iterate on this just so that our periodic commit so that we um it doesn't try to bring the whole thing we might be all right so i'm i'm feeling brave so worst case scenario is it's just going to yell at me and say hey not enough memory that's fine so i'm i'm feel, i'm gonna live life on the edge let's let's see what happens Right, so I'm going to bring back this query. We want this one. And then what we're going to do is with. Oh, we might even create them at the same time. Oh, why not? Let's, let's live life on the edge. With W. And I want to copy this bit. Title or group title. Let's do pre. No, we want to do merge. Yep, we do this way around. So merge. Uh, d -d 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 G group, uh, wine group. title group title and because we've got a merge we have to do a with and then a create so let's just oh that should be curly bra curly braces let's do that so it's, we're creating so we're going to create so if it doesn't exist um it will create it if it does exist then we treat it like a match and then we're going to do with G and W, we're going to create a relationship between wine and wine groups. So again, um, the reason why we're using create here is because we're assuming that wine is every single wine we have is unique. So every single relationship they're going to have coming off wine is always going to be unique as well to them. So we're going to do create. So let's do create. Uh, what did we 
agree on for the relationship between wine group, uh, wine in wine group. Uh, okay. Wine in wine group and G. Okay, let's see what happens. It, does it handle it gracefully or it, does it say that it needs so much memory? Wait and see. It's all good. So, it was relatively quick actually. You know when we did the, the you can see that so it did four records in less than two milliseconds. So hopefully it should be reasonably fast. I guess what we can do, just in case, is I'm going to go remind myself in documentation about what do we need to do if it does in fact need to be chunked out. So let's have a quick peek at the, let's, we, can, we can look through some functions whilst we're waiting and I can talk about some of the stuff. So um, you've got really cool things like time to live, so you can make, you can expire nodes. So if you only want a node to live for a certain period of time and then you want to get rid of it, you can. Uh, what other fun stuff we've got here? There's so much fun stuff. Oh, actually, it's probably worth mentioning. So uh, my colleague, Michael Hunger, is doing a session on APOC on Wednesday. So he does his session at, oh my goodness, let's do the time conversions. So it's 9 a.m. UTC, so 10 o'clock British summertime, 11 o'clock uh, European summertime, and that's happening this Wednesday on the 10th of June. Uh, for those of you who are watching this as a recording and it's after the 10th of June, there will be a recording that you can then see of Michael Hunger going through uh, APOC, so don't panic, it's still there. So if you're watching this in the in the future, then uh, check out our YouTube channel. We've got a playlist called Twitch, so just go in there and you'll find it in there. Okay, right, so we're looking at these. So what I'm I'm probably looking at the wrong wrong end of the documentation, but what I'm interested for is fast loading of stuff. And let's have a quick look. Has it finished? Is this moved? No, it's still going right. So let's have a quick look where we can find this. Otherwise, I shall Google it. Do, do, do. Mm -mm -mm. Periodic execution, that sounds like a winner. So what we may end up having to do, let's just make this a little bit smaller, hope you can hopefully you can still see on the screen. Uh, I just want to check which one I want. So we'll have some examples. The nice thing is, is that you always get little examples in documentation. So I can have a look at it and go, yep, yeah, that's the one I want. So we're probably going to use um, periodic iterate because we've got this sort of thing where I'm going to be uh, matching something uh, and then do some processing and then I'm going to, in, that, in this instance, merge something. So that's cool. So let's see what it tells us. Yeah, so that's probably what we're going to be using. Especially for graphs. Oh yes, so this this is the one. So just quickly go through this. So this one keeps running until the value that you've set comes back to zero. So maybe we'll use this one. We'll have, we'll have a look at those. So. If this if this doesn't quite complete, then we will come back. So we'll give it a few minutes. So what actually, you know what? I'm I'm not going to take the lazy, lazy route. I'm going to do this as a. I'm going to can this query because at the moment I was being a bit greedy because not only was I trying to create a new node, but I was also then trying to connect things together. So I'm not going to be greedy. I'm going to split out this query. And let's do this. Let's do that. And then what we'll do afterwards is then we're going to match the wine group and then create them. So I'm just going to comment these out. And let's just get let's get the wine groups in there first. And this is when you discover it, it completes in about I don't know thirty seconds. So it's all good. 
So we'll give it a few, give it a few seconds. And then otherwise we will do, the nice thing about using the uh, periodic iterate and the periodic commit is that you actually can see what's going on because it's doing stuff in batches. So you can always do like a sort of, I don't know, match w1 group return count w. And you can see like, okay, so it's, this is how many it's done. Because we know how, you know, we know roughly it's probably going to be, if we've got 120,000 wines, and let's, uh, I don't know, each one's got an average five, maybe a four title. So maybe we're gonna have 30,000 wine groups. Yeah, so we could, we could sort of, we, we did have a rough idea of when it was gonna complete. So let's see, let's uh, wait for this to complete. Let's see what happens. Oh, um, did I? Actually, no, it's here. So when you when you create indexes and do call db.schema, so unless there's a relationship between the nodes, it will pop up with like two nodes because you've got an index. So it looks in the scheme and goes, aha, these, this is going to be in your data model at some point. So that's fun. Well, let's, let's at least we can write out what we think this is going to look like if it's not going to work out. So... Okay, let's, we're going to copy and paste this. Just in the off chance that we are going to have to do this because it is quite a chunky query. Not we are we are asking a lot, and effectively, what's happening is it's trying to it's going to bring everything into memory, and it's bit it's it's bit of an ask, isn't it? So let's tailor what our query would look like for this. So I'm just going to actually we're going to do I don't want to remember, so I'm just going to grab a copy of this and. Let's bring up this query so we know what it looks like, and then we can just bung in our right. So what do we want? We want Okay, I think we can pretty much just copy this completely word for word. And we're going to put in a limit, so that's fine. Let's figure out where we want to put the limit. This makes it a bit neater. And limit and then what did we say we call it limit actually let's we can do it here can't we limit limit and oh, we can make it a bit smaller, can't we? A thousand, just in case. Ah, you know what? Let's let's. let's put my poor database. I'm just not giving it a chance to complete, am I? Let's run. Let's run the APOC one because at least we can sort of see progress, can't we? So I'm just going to can this again. And then what we can do is. 
but what we're, what we're able to do is oh i made i made the cardinal sin error oh no i didn't i called it title it's fine it's time it's fine no, no it's all good it's all good second i thought i'd called the property name group title and i'd create an index and title it's all good uh so what we're going to do is we're going to do this i'm going to limit it to a thousand so what happens is it'll just it'll do a thousand and then it comes back and does another thousand and it just keeps going until what have we got for it to stop to keep going or is that going to run until infinitum let me have a quick peek okay so I'm actually a limit limit yeah so I think it it will um I right, see what happens famous lost words okay let's go so this should be a bit quicker oh that does that's not good oh no oh okay that was okay so where we went horribly wrong is we didn't have that okay fine there you go lesson learned so how many wine groups do we have? Because uh, we estimated it'd be about 30,000, didn't we? So let's have a look. Ooh, wow, okay, wow, wow. I was not expecting it to be that few. That's, hang on, then we said, how many wines have we got? Hmm. I think there's something a bit fishy going on there. That looks a bit dodgy. I'm just gonna try something. Okay, I've not done something correct in that query, have I? What have what have I done wrong here? Because I guess it doesn't complete. As, all right, let's, let's look at the documentation again. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not sure that would work, but okay, let's. So what we can do is, if I do this, and you can, you'll see it update. Ooh, maybe you'll see it updating as more things come in. Let's see what happens. Maybe I've completely messed up there, which is fine. It's been a while since the last used that, so I'll just have to see what I did wrong.
Yeah, all right, we'll try iterate next. Try, try all the functions until something works. Okay, this one's probably the more appropriate one, to be honest with you, because if you think about what's going on here, we want to match every single wine node and process it. So that's probably what we should be doing. Oh well, it's all good. All right, let's do that. And so, gosh, this is well. However, we we slice it, this is going to be a long running query. It's all good. So, Okay, I'm gonna swipe this one. This is this is the relevant one. Mm -hmm. So we want to match wine, all the wine, all of it. Turn the wine, and then what we want to do is. this actually let's do this I'm going to return the actual regex let's do this so actually what I really want to do is return this don't I I don't care about this stuff so let's do it as W yeah that's what we want okay and then what we're going to do is we want to do the merge and then this is the thing that we want. So let's put that in. And the title is going to be W. I should probably call it wine title. So we know what we're looking at later. All right, okay. Do I want this in parallel? What did the doc say about doing things in parallel? Like updating or removing relations, either do not use parallel true or make sure your batch works in a way. Okay, so do we run the risk of the same node being? Um, uh, probably, I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let's do false just in case. All right, okay. Third time's the charm. These things always seem to be in threes. And what we'll probably have to do is see if there's there we go there we go so we can see it's it's updating so we'll just let it run i'm going to grab a copy of this so that we can write that up later when i update the documents what we ended up with and i'm also going to grab a copy of that very convoluted regex before i forget oh yes and we created some indexes didn't we i'll make a copy of that And that was the crazy, crazy regex pattern. Okay, cool. So, gonna let that go so we can see. Again, this is this this is what I like about this. It's pleasing. You know, it's doing something. It's 
it's a bit depressing when it just sort of sits there and you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on. So you get some feedback, which is nice. Probably so. Uh, let's let's see. I'm thinking it's going to be around thirty thousand or forty thousand. Let's. I'm um, intrigued to see how close or not. Oh, this is where we discover there's a lot of uh, separate wines and they didn't get reviewed across the years. That's a fun experiment, anyway. So we're going to repeat the same activity. So we're going to, once we've created them, we're going to have to link them together. I don't think a create should be a problem because it doesn't need to do any lookups, but we'll, we'll see what happens. It's all, it's all good. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to connect all of those uh, wine titles. So let's do that. So it's going to be, oh, I did say I have got a very short memory span. In wine group, that was the one. In wine group. Okay, so. So we're going to have to get the wine title again, so that's fine. And then we're going to... Okay, so we're going to have to match the wine, so that's fine. So let's copy and paste things, so it's going to be... Oops. As wine title, match the wine title, the wine group. Oh. And then we're going to come together. There we go. So we are good to go when that's done. And let's take this opportunity as well to write up the query for doing the same process with the year. Okay. Uh, it's going to be quite expensive given that it's probably not going to be a huge range of years, but it's all good fun. Right, so let's grab, we've got a copy of that, haven't I? Mm -hmm. do a quick let's get ready for nothing else so we can do the equivalent for the wine year so I'm just going to quickly call this wine year before I forget because I will and then I'll write over everything and I'll be very sad so you. be consistent with everything And let's get that crazy regex again. Okay, so that's going to return back our four digit year. And then we want to merge that as a year node. And then I'm going to go away and I'm going to just take a copy of that so that we don't have to figure it out later. And we're going to do the equivalent of adding the relationships again. I am all for reusing what I've already written. Uh, so we're going to match the... Oh, this is going to be... I feel like, I feel like there's... There is, ah, you know what we can do? Do you want to do years contains? You know what, I'm going to leave this for just now, because if you've only got a few years, then... 
maybe just trying to think what's quicker because maybe if we do a contains and then we can just cycle for each of the years. let's do that that's a different way of solving that problem so i'm going to leave that for now and uh, let's see how many years we've got and then what we might do Oh, I'm back. Sorry about that. I think uh, heavy processing on the CPU and streaming don't always mix. It's all good. So what I was thinking is what we could do for the year. So if we don't have a huge number of years, then maybe we can approach the problem a different way. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm, I, I was thinking of, well, we, we do the same trick where we try and convert the wine title to the year and then we're going to match the year node and do that but i was thinking actually maybe what we could do is use the contain so we can just perhaps just just use normal cipher and if we've only got a huge number of years then we can just sort of do like you know we cycle for each of the years and then just say where you know it, there's a title contains that then we use that so let's do that well then we've got different ways of of mapping them together but first of all we want this to complete so we're up to it's uh, up to twenty two thousand, so I think this is we're going to get to a stage where we don't see that number increment so much because it's probably finding a lot of titles that are the same. So it's getting there slowly, but we're getting there. This is good. I've reminded myself about periodic iterate. I haven't used this in a long time, so it's it's good to remind myself. So um, documentation is always handy. I'm happy it's there. quite excited to see what's going to happen here. So what I think as... We haven't gone very far today, so what I think we'll do is We'll try and get this done and we'll create the relationships between uh, the wine title and the wine and the wine thing. Um, wine, oops, sorry again. The wine and the wine title. I'm going to need to repeat this with the year, but I can do that offline and I can write up documentation. But the create relationship should be pretty fast because it doesn't have to do any lookup at all. It literally just creates the relationships. So we'll add that in as well and then we can have a look at the data model. And what we can do. So uh, what we can do is just find out wines that have got many uh, wine groups that have got many wines connected them because that's going to tell us that there's a lot of that you know that's going to tell us if there's lots of wines associated with the title. And what we'll do as well is then then we can pull the year out of what's returned. So we can at least find out which wines which which wine uh, title or which wine group has most wines associated with it. So that'll be fun. So let's. Let's let's see how this plays out. We'll we'll do that and then we'll finish on the high. It's probably worth mentioning actually whilst we're waiting. Um, so it, it, we had a number of ways of how we could have resolved this problem. So perhaps the, the best way of approaching this would have been maybe processing the data outside of outside of here. So for example, I could have I could have probably hacked something together in Excel to that could have extracted the year out. Or um, again, there, there are ways that you can you can go through and pre-process the data. So the reason why it's only if it may feel like this is taking quite a long time, you, you've got a number of things at play here. Uh, so one thing to bear in mind is um, obviously it's having to. So we've even got index lookup. We still have to do index lookup to add things. And the other thing to bear in mind is that because we are online, the database is online. Any changes that I make to the database, they're all transactional changes. So every single time I make a change, because 
uh, Neo4j is an ACID database. It does mean that we have to keep track of every transaction that happens. So if, if I wanted to um, sort of fall back because you know something happened, my database blew up or my, my computer blew up, I poured coffee all over it, or whatever, um, and I wanted to go, wanted to go, um, sort of go back. I can, but obviously the the trade off here is that this can take longer, especially if we've got quite a lot of data, which. We haven't, we haven't got a huge amount, but this is still quite an expensive, expensive query that I'm running here. So that's why it's just taking a little bit longer, but that's okay. Still finding those wine titles. Well, I'm feeling, I'm feeling optimistic that it's going to be around thirty thousand. We'll see what happens. Feel like I should have made the batch size a bit bigger. That's where I failed. Too late now. I'm, t I'm too committed. Oh, no pun intended. Alright, so I think what we're going to do, this is obviously taking a while, so I'm going to let it play out. I'm going to go and have a tinker as well uh, to see if I can make this a bit faster. So I will post the updated code in the repository. So what I will do as well, so that we're ready for the next session, is I'll get the stuff sorted on I'll get the stuff sorted for uh, linking the year as well. So all of that's going to be written up. And what I think I'll do as well, as this is a bit on the bit on the time-consuming side, I might also uh, make uh, I might do a dump of my database, and then that might be something fun we can talk about next week as well. So I, I'll create a dump of the database, and then that's something we can talk about as to how would you go about uh, dumping and loading a database. So that's something we can look at next week. And then that's probably quicker to load what I've created rather than trying to uh, go through some of the scripts. So let's get that done as well. And that'll be a fun thing we can look at next week too. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let this carry on doing its thing. And then uh, next week, I guess we can... First thing we can do is ask some exciting questions of the data. So I'll leave it there and take care. Have a great day. Bye.